So today we're going to talk about love attachment styles, why we choose the people we choose. And I'm really excited to have the author of Wired for Love, Dr. Stan Tatkin, in the house to share with us uh, his expertise in this area and to help those find more um, healthy love versus unhealthy love. So Dr. Stan Tatkin, welcome. Thank you, Jonathan. Thanks for inviting me here. Yeah. So let's just dive right into this. Can you give us the cliff note version of love attachment style and how someone acquires their love attachment style? It's so funny when you say that, it, it reminds me of Love American Style, which was a TV, <laughs> a TV show when I was growing up. I remember it well. <laughs> love attachment style. The song yeah. is going in my head. <laughs> um, so uh, people should understand that love is not the same as attachment. Attachment may make us feel like we love, but it's more of a survival uh, matter, a biological glue that holds our species together. So that glue is, I think of it as the I can't quit you glue. Mm -hmm. uh, and that has allowed us to be social animals, interactional animals. We basically are herd animals that pair bond within the herd. So attachment is the felt sense, the experience of safety and security with the people that we depend on, starting from the very beginning, from infancy. Mm -hmm. if, the, if we don't have a secure environment or a secure caregiver, then we make compensations very, very young. We adapt before people remember. Babies do this right away. And that's a culture, generally speaking, that is either pro-relationship, which is secure, or pro-self. And that's really the difference between insecure attachment. I, I put myself ahead of relationship and okay. secure attachment. I put relationship ahead of myself. Myself mm -hmm. is in there, right? But the relationship is, is more important than myself needs. And I behave in a way that shows that, right? So if I understand then it, the differentiating is when I, for, I, I was thinking, the minute you said I was thinking, when I put someone up on a pedestal, when I put them above me, if you will, then, and I'm, and I'm feeling some, dependency on them, that is attachment versus yes. when I put my own needs first and I still have a relationship with someone, that's not, that's not the same dependency. Well, if we're talking about adult relationships, right? Yes, I'm talking about, oh, good point. Because I want to differentiate for our audience. I, I'd really like to focus in on this conversation about adult relationships and more importantly, particularly in the area of dating. Romance. You know, I think this is a really, this conversation, you know, a lot of times love attachment conversations are based on couples, but I really want to focus today on that early stages of building a relationship with someone. And, you know, because there is a lot of conversations out there talking about anxious attachment style and avoid attachment style and secure attachment style. And well, I actually have a quick question for you before I go into the one I was really thinking about. I know in the book Attached, they claim that 50% of people are secure attachment style. And I want to be candid with you. I don't believe that number to be true. And I'd like to know from your perspective, and I think of this from those people who are actually dating, is there any studies to show what someone's attachment style is before they mate with someone? Well, there, there, is, there are only a few measures that are, okay. that are official in other words, reliable. And, and unfortunately, the data that they're referring to in the book attached are self-reports, which are not reliable. Oh. So we could say that our culture is more on the avoidant side, just like Europe. Or parts of Eastern Europe are not on the avoidant side. They're more on the ambivalent side. Okay. Um, so it depends, it depends on the greater culture because this is actually a way of, of interacting, a way of, of being with another person. And that is learned through actually the family culture, which is part of the greater system. 
right? So, so we don't have that because we just the the instruments for for doing this are not as good as we would like in terms of cross cultural, in terms of cross economic, right? Groups, and so they may not be so accurate. Also, also we may also say that in some ways. Our attachment orientation, which is basically a set of fears based on memory of what happens when I depend on someone, very yeah. predictable, is just a human problem, right? It's a human issue about dependency and independence, fears. Both sides, by the way, of insecure attachment would be deemed anxious, right? They're anxious about different things. And avoidant is anxious about having their their freedom yes being taken from them okay uh, from being smothered from not being able to be themselves in a relationship they have to comply and their their main strategy for self protection is to flee yeah so right but that's anxiety they just look like they're not well you said something very f interesting to me so you I, I think you implied here in the united states that probably the high, there's a higher percentage of avoidance than there are anxious. Yeah. And, and that might be true in other countries as well. That's kind of interesting because I thought there would be a balance between those two numbers. Think of, think of, of, of what we always seem to be saying, a self-made person, don't, you know, don't tread on me. I, I need to be, my freedoms are the most important thing. I'm an independent person. You mm. know, we, we really, you know, I don't need anybody else, you know, in statements like we got to love ourselves before we can love another person. These are, these are not true, but, but it's true in our culture. We, we repeat these things all the time. And so just by our own expression here, you know, our declaration of independence, we don't have a declaration of interdependence. Which is, <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> which is really what we are. Yeah. We do need each other. We would go nuts if we weren't interacting. If we were all by ourselves, we'd go a little cuckoo. So it's a, a lot of this is a, a denial of our actual biology. All right. So let's talk about love for a moment because, you know, I, I've observed many people attached to another human being, oftentimes in an unhealthy way. Maybe it's a dependency way or whatnot. And they believe that this is love. Now, to them, that's what it feels like. I know I've been that way. I've been in that position where I, I, I've been attached to someone in an unhealthy way. And I don't mean a toxic way. I want to just differentiate. the, the diff It wasn't toxic. It just wasn't you know, very healthy because I put this person on a pedestal. And I believe that that was love. But now when I've reflected upon it after studying this a bit more, I realized, no, it was just an attachment or even a dependency into another person. Why is this confused so frequently? Why do people believe this is love when it's really an attachment? Because attachment has loving aspects attached to it. Okay. So when we, when we test people, let's say we do a, what's called an adult attachment interview, Okay. We're, we're basically doing a sweep for a person's procedural memory of their childhood and their caregivers, and then an autobiographical memory of the same, of the same, you know, the same declarative memory. I, I misspoke, not procedural, but okay. procedural decla declared memory. And, and so there, there's, we look for loving memories strongly loving memories or strongly unloving memories, because those are the ones that stick, the ones that are meant just for us. So there, you know, there's, there are attachment behaviors that are felt to be unloving. There are attachment behaviors that are felt to be loving. So I, you can understand why they're, why they're sort of, you know, mixed together. But, but the reason I call it the, I can't quit you biology is because just like you're saying, it will keep us in a relationship that perhaps we shouldn't be in. And we come up with all sorts of reasons why we can't quit this person. But the main reason is that it, it's an existential threat to our survival. Mm. On, on, on a primitive infant level, we feel that uh, it goes back to if mommy dies, I die. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, I, there, it's a death of, of a part of me. It's a death of something so big, I cannot bear it. And that's why people will, at the bottom of all this, will hold a, a relationship uh, for a long time. Now, as a therapist, I can leverage that. That's great. But uh, if people really shouldn't be together, and I don't think of it as healthy, I think of it as, is this relationship based on two autonomous adults coming together based on terms and conditions, not love, yeah. terms and conditions? And, and are they both considering each other having shared power and shared authority? Two generals, right? Two executives, two bosses. And that's how I see a secure functioning relationship uh, being in adulthood, right? It's the only thing that will work. Yeah. And it has yeah. to remain fair, just, and mutually sensitive. That I think works better than healthy, unhealthy.